Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to another session of advice here. Now today's advice comes from a user submitted question following up from the previous video, which you can check in the description below in the playlist about what do I do after I've acquired an internship? And I thought this was a really good question because again, maybe this stuff doesn't always get talked about as there's a lot of focus on interviewing and then what happens once you actually get the job and show up to work. So with that said, here's a few pieces of advice here. So some of the first pieces of advice that I can give you are perhaps things that are just going to make common sense, like showing up on time, for instance. And it's needless to say that if you can show up on time, especially on the first day of work, so your team's not wondering where you are or these types of things, again, that can uh, just set the expectations that you are professional. If you're especially coming from school or transitioning to a new job in a career, uh, again, I think that's just very important. Uh, and along with that, it also comes with, it's inevitable, you might have to take time off during that internship. There's usually vacation policies, but just give as much time as possible if you do have to leave your role. Again, the company is taking a serious investment in you by paying you and bringing you to the company, sometimes at far distance. So if you have to leave for any reason, try to give as much notice as possible. Maybe you have some family event, maybe you have some conference you have to speak to, uh, maybe there's just some other thing that you have to take care of. So the longer the notice you give, the better and the more likely that won't cause any problems. Again, folks understand work-life balance in industry. They have families and such too. So if you're coming to this, especially from a student perspective, just try to be reasonable. Again, there's not the same sort of dynamic versus a professor and say a student where, you know, if you're the student, you're the paying customer. And when you're working, you're the working individual. So again, just show up on time, be professional, give folks notice. The other thing that I can recommend early on in your internship is to try to schedule a one-on-one. -on -one. This is usually with your direct manager, the person who's hired you, who you have a team with, and just be kind of welcoming and receptive to the advice that they're able to give. You know, it's a little bit of their time. Sometimes you can do this during lunch um, and you could even say, hey, I'll take you out to tea or whatever or coffee uh, if we can meet in the office uh, and just talk about my performance, what your expectations are, whatever it might be. And I recommend doing this regularly because it's a great way to keep getting updates and direct feedback. Sometimes it's hard to get feedback if you're in a group scenario. So getting that one-on-one -on -one feedback from your manager whose job it is to sort of measure your performance and make sure you're completing your tasks. And it depends on the manager that you work with and their style, but sometimes you just have to ask them, honestly, how am I doing? What can I do to improve? Sometimes managers won't always be as direct. Sometimes they might even be too direct. And that's also your opportunity to say, hey, I perform really well if I can do these things. And that's in everybody's best interest. So again, talking with your manager, scheduling a one-on-one -on -one earlier, the better during the internship phase, uh, or if you're doing a co-op or even just starting a new job, this advice still applies. Uh, that's something that I would uh, keep in mind. The other thing you just have to keep in mind when you're starting an internship, especially if you're coming in very early, is that from a management standpoint, it's a little bit of a challenge for them to find some work that you can do, some meaningful work. Keep in mind, you might be working with an engineer who's been working on the same project for 20 years, and they have to find a piece of work that's a good entry point for you to start on. So hopefully they found some good piece of work for you, but uh, what I'm saying with this is try to over deliver where you can. Again, most companies aren't going to put an intern on the critical path, meaning that if you fail your project, the company loses a lot of money or there are serious consequences. Uh, in most cases, uh, some companies might be different, um, but just keep in mind that if you can over deliver on you know, the chunks of work that they're giving you, that again sets yourself up for ultimately what you want. This internship is sort of a trial run to see if you can be a successful full-time employee at this company. So just something to keep in mind. Now, with that said, some other things that you can do to be successful is to uh, shadow some of the other folks who are doing internships, or what I really mean by this is uh, shadow some of the other engineers and saying, hey, can I sit back and just watch how you work for the next 15 or 20 minutes? Of course, ask for permission, ask ahead of time, schedule a calendar event. But as you get to know your team, maybe after a few weeks, say, hey, I'd really like to see how you work on this problem. Now, oftentimes you'll go through code reviews and such so you can understand a little bit how engineers work, but sometimes it can be insightful to just sit behind someone for 15 minutes, again with their invitation, and just sort of see what tools they use. How do they debug a problem? Maybe they're using some cool text editor that you've never seen, like Vim or something. And you just want to see how they work efficiently, what plugins they have, and those things can be 
uh, quite valuable. And again, you don't necessarily have to do this on internships. You could do this on YouTube watching other programmers. But again, it could be meaningful in the context of you're in the company. And again, it's a way to kind of strengthen your bonds with some of these engineers here. So shadow some of the other interns, some of the other engineers. And again, it'll also just give you some different ideas of what's going on in the company, the different projects here. I made that engineers or interns. And then while you're at your internship, you'll of course be able to continue leveling up your skills. So that means things like watching YouTube videos and so on. You'll know the exact sort of project that you're working on. And if you're doing C++ work or C Sharp or D or whatever it might be, then you can find the appropriate YouTube videos, courses on LinkedIn Learning or whatever to help you level up your skills. So consider doing that. And in some ways you can do that. That's part of the expectation while you're working. Uh, now that's not to say that you should just sit at work and watch video courses, but to expect to do a little bit of that maybe um, the last hour of the day, an hour after work to, again, continue trying to over deliver. Because again, your goal is to show them that you're gonna be a great hire later on and that they can bring you back to the company. So consider leveling up your skills. And some other just general advice, you know, consider joining your team on lunch on occasion. Again, every culture is different. Sometimes teams don't do lunch, sometimes they do, but consider just doing it, participating in the social part of the company. Uh, that is, if you have a team of a few folks who go out to lunch, um, again, maybe you're not going to eat the same thing. Maybe you pack your lunch versus the team likes to spend money going out. But again, try to do it on occasion. It's just a nice social thing to do to show that you're engaged. They get to know you a little bit outside of work. Uh, I just logistically, it's part of networking. So it's just a good idea to do that when you can. Uh, and along with that, enjoy other internship activities if there are some. I know when I was at larger companies, this was true that there were uh, organized events for interns. You get to meet a lot of people who end up being your colleagues at different companies. Um, people that I did internship activities with that I didn't actually uh, work with ever uh, at various companies. I've actually seen them at other conferences um, in different states and in different countries sometimes. So those connections, you know, go uh, farther than you think sometimes. Uh, and it's kind of fun that you have that initial connection uh, with other folks. So that's how you build up your network on LinkedIn and stuff by getting to know people and participate in these activities. Now, you might also be at a smaller company where you're the only intern, um, and that's possible um, that there aren't just many activities. So maybe you're in a new city, for example, and consider participating in some of the local meetups if they're available. So for instance, if you're in a big city, there's often lots of meetups. Even if you're in a small city, just say, hey, I've got this internship time. I'm out of school where normally I'd be doing activities. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just join this remote meetup and again, meet other people working on this type of work that I like doing. So that's the idea there. And I'll move out of the way just so you can kind of see the rest of that text there. And the final note that I'm going to put here is just consider writing a thank you note towards the end of your internship to your mentors that you might have met, uh, people who are impactful, your manager, uh, if you had a good experience and it is in fact genuine. Uh, that's a nice way just to remember that, you know, someone took time to hire you, to bring you in. Uh, of course, you should be getting paid work. So there is some benefit, but um, again, just to thank them for the experience, maybe some things that you learned and so on. I think it's a nice thing to do if it's genuine. And most of the time I would do that in my internships. Uh, again, if I genuinely had a good experience and I think folks remember that it's something uncommon uh, and it's a nice note. I know certainly when folks thank me, I certainly appreciate it. All right, folks. So those are just a few things you can consider during your internship and especially towards the start of the internship to give you some success. Let me know in the comments below if you have other tips or tricks. Uh, if you're hiring interns, what you like to see. Uh, and if you've been an intern, what's worked successfully for you? That's, well, ultimately secured you a job at the company. All right, folks, thanks for your time and attention, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.